bloody fantastic. Hello everybody, my name is Goodboy and welcome to a super awesome special video on how to get a 72% win rate with Pangalia. I have the rather fantastic uh, Divine divine Ranked Medal uh, 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 Huntler with me. How's it going, Huntler? Yeah, it's great. It's great. And Huntler today is going to show us through the uh, really quite uh, uh, staggering way that can, you can play Pangalia to have incredible levels of success. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so, uh, so, 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 Huntler, tell us a little bit more about the success you've been having with uh, with Pangalia. So, um, some guys probably know I'm not an off laner. I I usually just play mid lane and uh, carry, but I really like this hero, so I decided to give it a try because everyone said that he's kind of bad and I had a great success with it. I think I have around 70% of win rate, maybe a bit above that with the hero after he got buffed. Yeah. So um, I think he's just insanely strong. He uh, He's pretty tanky. He offers good damage output inside team fights. He can gank, he can farm relatively fast. He's not scaling very well, but games tend to not last so long in this, uh, in this uh, meta. Yeah, I think he's he's just great. Okay, great. Now, because because on average across the meta, he actually has quite a negative win rate, about forty five percent win rate. So I, I'm putting down a lot of that to the fact that people are don't know how to play him, and that's why he's kind of not doing particularly well. Would you say that was fair? Yeah, for sure. Like I just checked the top one hundred players uh, with Bengal gear, and some people are still building Desolator on the hero because they think that the passive is gonna. Uh, get their armor down to zero, and then with this later they're gonna put it to minus armor, but it doesn't work like that. The passive is gonna block the armor to zero, right. so it cannot go it cannot go lower, but they don't know that, so they are trying to go Dezo, and they are top 100 players with Pangold here, so this, this tells a lot about how much people really know about the hero, that's why the win rate is so low, they just don't know the hero. Excellent. Well. well, hopefully this Today's video will be extremely illuminating for everyone watching. So, okay, cool. Uh, so let's talk, let's walk our way through some questions. So let's talk about starting items and laning phase for Pangalia. So usually I started out with Tangos, the Stealth Shield, a couple of branches and a Salve, because I really want to be tanky inside that laning phase. I don't really care that much about mana because I'm not going to use the spells too often and I'm going to I'm gonna grab a bottle later, I'm gonna grab my kill, I'm gonna grab my magic wand. So I don't really care that much about it in the in the beginning, in this in the in the beginning of the laning phase. Yeah. Um in terms of playing inside the lane, I just want to trade a lot with the supports because Pangolier has very high armor, has four armor level one. Wow. Um uh, also his Q ability is extremely good because you can trade with him. And if the if the carry wants to step in. I can just use it to reposition myself and also harass the support plus the carry. So this can really allow me to trade. I don't really care that much about um, about getting last hits. I don't want to get too much farm. I just want to get levels. Right. Because I feel like this hero doesn't really rely on farm. I'm happy with getting levels, maybe a last hit here and there using my shush buckle yeah. and getting the bounty runes. Now, obviously, if uh, if they're gonna let if they're gonna leave me alone, then I'm gonna step in and get some last hits. But if they're putting a lot of pressure, I'm just gonna leech XP. I'm trying to go from um, from left to right and hide inside the trees. Yeah. So they cannot really see me. They need to come close, so we can uh, so I can trade with them last hits. Okay, great. Right. And there it is. And there's your first uh, lovely little kill there. Oh, and you managed to yeah. get the courier as well. Oh no, they got him away in time. No. <laughs> So, uh, okay, great. So, very easy to reposition the guy using his Q and very easy to, well, deal damage but also prevent damage from hitting him. So, he, he, really, he's an, he's an ideal offlaner, isn't he? Uh, I, I, I think he's kind of weak in the lane. Like, he cannot really put pressure. Like, I would love to play anti-mage versus him because he cannot really force me out of the lane. Yeah, cool. Okay, fine. So, in, in many ways, actually, the laning phase isn't actually that um, that critical for Pangalia. It's more, as long as you're getting the experience then and the battery runes, then you're, you're pretty happy. Um, 
Okay, cool. So how do you gank and what are your early game items? So I like to go with Magic Wand, Battle, uh, Aquila, and the Boots of Speed. The reason why I don't upgrade the Boots of Speed into anything is because the hero doesn't need um, doesn't need more mana. The hero doesn't need uh, the stats from, from the threads. He doesn't really care about that extra attack speed. Also, the phase boot is kind of bad yeah. on him because the short buckle is going to deal... Um, a fixed amount of damage, so he doesn't care if you're going to deal more damage if you're, um, if you're right clicks. Yeah. Gosh, okay, great. So let's talk about the, uh, the, the gank setup then. So uh, what happened here with this invoker? So usually uh, I want to harass them and drop them low enough until I'm ready to just use my wool to finish them off. Right. So right here, as you can see, I'm harassing them a couple of times. Yeah. They also want to go aggressive on me, but I'm backing off. Yeah. And I'm using my bottle, the magic one and all that to just keep me healthy. I have a ton of regen. Yeah. So I'm playing this game like back and forth, kinda of like a slark. And yeah. then when they drop low enough, I just finish them off because I'm magic immune inside my ultimate. Always try to look for cliffs so you can bounce back from them. Ah, the ultimate. Okay. So you can start them uh, a bit more and you're also gonna dish out uh, extra damage with the ultimate is 200 uh, times two so that's 400 yeah before you're near a cliff got 400 it 400 magical damage but still yeah 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 still a, a, a good chunk good chunk and of course you got your stun as well double stun in yes. fact so so that's pretty solid also, okay i don't want to i don't want to close up with the charge buckle unless i know I'll, unless I know that they cannot kill me. So, for example, against an anti-mage, I wouldn't go close with the Shush Buckle because he can just hit me and burn all my mana. Yeah. And then, I, and then I'm no longer going to be able to kill him. So, against something like an anti-mage, I'm just going to use my Shush Buckle yeah. from far away. Gotcha. Gotcha. But against that invoker, I wanted to use step in so I can also right-click him because even if he hits harder, I can go back and bottle up. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Oh, that's that's that is phenomenal. Very very helpful insight there. Particularly that invoker really didn't see that coming. <laughs> so okay, great. So let's talk about uh, mid game plan and the kind of itemization that we need to be going for for Pangolier. Desolator is a no. Is that right? Yes. No. I, uh, you should never go Deso. I like to go with the Diffusal Blade as the first item because the Diffusal Blade actually synergizes with the Charge Buckle. So every time you are gonna hit them, you are gonna burn their mana and. Uh... Also, the Diffusal Blade is going to burn, uh, I think, 50 of their mana. And that means an extra 40 damage per hit. So since you hit them four times with the Shush Buckle, it's going to be an extra 200 damage on the Shush Buckle. Plus, plus the fact that you're going to burn their mana, so you just force them back to the base. And yeah. I want to play him extremely aggressive. As you can see right here, I'm sitting close to them. I'm trying to identify who can kill me. So in this case, I think Void can kill me if he chronos me. Yeah. So I'm sitting away from Void. But uh, other than that, I'm playing extremely aggressive. I don't want to necessarily kill them, just to pressure them. And if my team comes in, I can uh, jump in with the ultimate and finish them off. Yeah. And if not, then uh, my team is just going to outfarm them completely. Yeah. yeah. Because they're going to be forced into going back. So I like to go with Diffusal Blade, and the next item is going to be Basher. Once again, he's going to synergize with the Shush Buckle. Excellent. So I can just, um, the Bash is going to dish out a lot of damage. Okay, wow. So that's that, lockdown. Yeah, yeah. So that's some pretty solid stuff there. So swashbuckle. Actually, uh, I I kind of underestimated how effective it is. Really, as an ability, um, seems like uh, what other unique attack mod? What other uh, items can you you know synergize with it, as it were? Maelstrom, um, Scuddy, Life Steel, uh, Daedalus. Jeez, all yeah. of that goes with swashbuckle. That's insane. Yes. yes. Okay. But Battle Fury, but the, other than the Diffusal Blade and the Basher, I don't really like the rest of them. Maelstrom might look like a great idea, but uh, you can dish out even more damage with the Diffusal Blade plus burning their mana, so it's not that great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The Maelstrom might be better at farming, but if you think about it, the Shrush Buckle plus the W is enough to clear out an entire creep wave. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So then yeah. the Maelstrom doesn't really make uh, sense. And what about Scardy? Is that is that I, I like Scadia as a last item, obviously. You don't want to go for it very early because early you want some cheap power spike items. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, right. cool. Yeah, obviously, I don't want to do jump too late into the extension items. Okay, and so uh, just back to the sort of the plan, as it were. So it's it's 
so it's a reasonably aggressive type of pushing strategy really isn't it where you're avoiding hostile enemies but also you know making sure lanes are pushed in and, and harassing people from a distance is that is that about right yes okay cool so how do we team fight with pangolin it struck me as someone who's extremely good in a team fight so in the early game you want to start it out with the shush buckle yeah and then run in with the ultimate in the late game Generally, I want you just uh, start it out with the ultimate and just uh, run at people that are sitting in the back. Because right here in this video, Void is gonna jump in on those guys, and now I'm jumping on uh, on the rest of his team. So Void was alone right there, and he couldn't accomplish anything. And now my team can come in and just finish all of them off because. I kept them busy, basically. That's amazing. And also, you didn't die. That's the thing that really impressed me there. You went against four people by yourself, and you didn't die. <laughs> yeah, because you're magic immune. But um, you're going to die a lot with this hero. A lot. But okay. It doesn't, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. Like, you're going to lose the impact in the late game. Like, you just want to basically pressure them, go in, ult. Yeah. And let's say that Void jumps in. I go in on the sniper, Tidehunter, and all that. They're going to yeah. be forced into attacking me. Yeah. And then if I see that Void is getting vulnerable, I can just shush buckle on top of the Void and defuse or blade him and just basically separate him from the team. Oh, wow. And finish him off and they also used all their thing to stop me. Void went in, used the Chrono and then my team can just follow up and finish all of them. Okay, fine. So that might be actually one of the areas I would predict a lot of less experienced players would fall down because getting that balance right of, of how to time yeah, it's, Pangolier... It's kind of it's complicated. Is, is, is complicated okay fine so let's let's uh, expand a bit more on the team fight then so we've got a team fight going on here you've gone a long distance with your uh, ultimate yes right here i couldn't really sneak in with that charge buckle because i don't want to go in with the charge buckle and then get stunned and die yeah so i couldn't afford the risk right there uh, in the in the previous team fight i could do that because i felt like they were not prepared for it like sometimes you need to go with the flow yeah you know like right here i felt like okay they're gonna see me coming for sure so i'm gonna get stunned and i'm gonna die so that's why i decided to play safe and just initiate with the ultimate yeah and then just spam that w because you have only two second cooldown on it yeah so i really want to i really want to spam it to gain um uh, yeah resistance and obviously to dish out as much damage as possible yeah okay cool so so basically with the ultimate so so uh, effectively what you're saying is there's two ways of doing it you either swashbuckle in an ultimate or then you just ultimate in and then you swashbuckle the ultimate in is the safer way to do it isn't it yeah. if you're if they're prepared for a fight and you know that you can't surprise or you know quote unquote gank them as it were uh then then actually you just need to do it safe with your team but the the preferred method as it were is if you're confident you can squash buckle in and then use your ultimate that is better think about it like a like a brewmaster like sometimes he's gonna blink ult but sometimes he wants to blink clap hit and then ult yeah. for, uh, for maximum damage but sometimes he cannot if the enemies have something like a silence brilliant brilliant okay so he needs to be extremely careful okay excellent so just tell me about the uh, just to, to finish off here the, the late game what is the late game strategy with pangolier because you mentioned he kind of goes off the boil a bit in the in the late game is that right yes so usually in the late game i just want to um I want to stick with my team as much as possible. I'm going to get words for them. I'm going to get smokes for them. Okay. All that kind of stuff. And just, yeah, basically just stick, uh, stick close to them because you want to end the game uh, as fast as possible. Now, obviously, if you have an alchemist or an anti-mage in your team, then you are not going to be uh, too sad about the game uh, going late. Yeah. But generally speaking, you want to end it. Uh, you want to end it quickly while you still have impact, because the sure. charge buckle is gonna deal the same damage at 40 minutes uh, as it does at uh, 15 minutes. Yeah. Right. So. So he really, he really, really goes off the boil. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, that's that. That makes sense, and I, I think that's probably one of the other issues we see with Pangolier is because he's a, very much a mid game hero, a very, very good mid game hero, but nonetheless a mid game hero. A lot of lower skill matches will. <laughs> sometimes you know it's easy it's easy to lay a, a low skill match for sure and then that results obviously in pangolier being less and less effective and i think that's probably why his win rate is, is a bit low yeah so okay cool no that's that's really great okay cool well well Handler, that, that's that's some brilliant insights there i think that's real really good food for thought i imagine we'll probably need to do another one of these once we get some some a lot of questions coming in from fans but that is such a good start and, and amazing to see such a, a great little win right there 
Yeah, um, so, uh, so Huntler it, it works in conjunction with Gamer Sensei, and that these are the people who have brought this wonderful video today uh, for us. Um, so, I have put a referral link um, down below, and I'd like all of you to anybody watching this video to just to sign up for the service. You don't necessarily have to pay to use it, but just I'd love you to all sign up. I'm going to be giving away an Arcana to um uh, picked at random from from the people that do sign up to use the service so literally so you don't have to pay to use anything you can just sign up you know s sign up to use it and then i will you'll all go into a hat and then be drawn out and the winner will get an arcana so do of course set it up but for those who are thinking actually yeah this is this is super awesome amazing i want you to click on the referral link sign up using my thing and then there's a code i've put underneath uh, put that code in and that code will take you straight to Huntler and then he will start uh, the process of, of coaching you. And what he'll do is, this, the, pro the problem with a video like this is there's so much more in-depth detail that I cannot give to you because and unfortunately it would take like it'd be like a three four hour video if we went to the finer points of, of all the great stuff Huntler can actually give that to you um at a, at a, at a very very impressive t price as, as low as five dollars for one hour um to really help you get to grips with how to master a certain hero and i think that's the great thing about coaching is that once you've learned all your core information from like you know uh from game Leap or from you know other other video sponsors the next step is to um is to have someone who's going to analyze all your play specifically and really help you get the maximum out of his and it's, and it's amazing you can see a 20 percent improvement in your win rate just by having up to three hours coaching with somebody so just just do bear that in mind um, particularly if you want to leave a certain skill bracket or get that next medal they can do that so uh so that's that's that there uh Huntler, thank you so much for uh for once again enlightening us with with pangalia and uh we look forward to seeing you soon all right thanks for having me. and everybody else stay tuned for more great stuff coming soon thank you goodbye <laughs>